So I'm going to read some pieces tonight that are erasures of transcripts from interviews with different artists in California. The first one is Demon Korn. I'd always understood it was German. Shortly after my father died, my mother had a friend who was Dutch and had been born in Holland. She had grown up close to a community, a small community named Demon Korn. My mother was getting a bit on in age. She informed me one evening when I had her for dinner, it's possible our name is Dutch. Determined to figure out what, we were going to take a trip, and we did. Holland, Germany, Austria, Italy, we just had this gorgeous time. And all the time from south of Holland, when we'd stay someplace, I'd look in the telephone book. I found all sorts of names that were very much like it, except for one letter here and there. Then, in a hotel in Hamburg, in the lobby, with girls sitting around answering questions, I looked in the telephone book and found four demon corns. This made my flesh sort of crawl. I'd never seen my name other than referring to me or my family. So, well, I called one, and he was hospitable. He recalled hearing about a great-grandfather who had gone to America and disappeared. They were farmers, the demon corns. I had always understood that demon corn meant cornfield but apparently the derivations didn't. Our name originated in Sweden. It was a dialect. It means the grain stacked in the shape of a house. And here is Walter Askin. I remember my father then, who was a draftsman with the city of Pasadena, bringing home all these drawings he'd done from the engineering and street department there. And my brother and I used to draw on the backs of these. We always had paper and pencils and French curves and erasing sheets and so forth around us all the time. We lived in a rented house at 815 Mar Vista, and it had a little rose pattern wallpaper on the wall. I had taken to drawing small figures like boats and things inside of the roses. My mother was talking with a salesman at the door one day, and she hadn't scrutinized the wallpaper very carefully up until that time. She was not interested in what he was saying, but she did start to see what was happening in her wallpaper. When the salesman left, she let me know in no uncertain terms, and probably with some application to the backside, that this was not to happen. Something that made such a wonderful, kindly, generous, good, and giving person so angry must be very powerful. And I really became committed to art. Oh no, I'm not making that up. This is Ruth Asawa. I like to be surprised by a nectarine. If I plant a tomato seed, I will get a tomato plant out of it. Then I will get tomatoes from that. I like that. I like the steps that one gets from merely planting a seed or planting a plant. I like what happens because you know that you get an eggplant every time you plant an eggplant seed. Or you know you're going to get a melon. I like that. I like getting a cucumber, or what I've got, or what if I've got a cucumber and a mixture, a hybrid. I like that too, because I'll get something new, and I like that. I like to be surprised by a nectarine that is no longer a nectarine. I'm surprised. I like nectarine, apricot, being put together, but I guess I want something in the end. If you take material you like, and you know how far you can take it, from what it is traditional to do, like a piece of paper, you take it another step. And if it teaches you some geometry, and it's not just for writing something, and you find that you can go from two dimension to three dimension, that interests me. And it can be any material, it just has to be able to do that. I think that that's an important thing. It may not last forever, then I like the idea of it lasting. So when I cast a face, I know I'm capturing just a minute of a person. Or if I cast a foot of a baby, I know that baby's foot will grow and grow and grow, but at the moment, I like that. That moment that I caught, in a way, is what I like about casting faces. I don't care about making that a technique, but I like the idea of stopping the moment of a time, and it's going to disappear. I know it's going to go away, but I like that. I like that moment freeze the moment, and then it's gone. It's like a snapshot, probably, but I'm not interested in photography. I have many masks. They're life masks. I'm not usually creating death masks as much as I'm interested in people who go on after this. 
And that's why I have Paul, our Paul, when he was six years old. Now he's 43 years old. And I haven't done them in sequence, but I have him when he was in his 20s. It would be interesting to do that with a foot. And what I like is the material is irrelevant. It's just that that happens to be material that I use. And I think that is important, that you take an ordinary material, like wire, and you make it. You give it a new definition, that's all. All right, here we have Enrique Chigoya. Spaniards brought the rats to the Americas. I paint over 19th century prints, and there was a portrait of St. Francis. The scene is that of taking Christ from the cross, or maybe St. Anthony. I'm trying to remember who it was. One of these saints that was taking Christ from the cross. And I painted over the head of Christ, the head of a pre-Columbian god, Tlaloc, who is the god of rain. He has tusks, and he looks more like a demon or a devil, very round eyes. So I painted him over Christ, and he changed the whole picture. Suddenly, it's the saint taking down the crucified pre-Columbian god. And on the bottom, I had footprints from a rat that was in my studio. And the rat stepped over some oil paints I had in another painting, walked over this other painting, and then walked over this print and left little footprints. When I saw this drawing the next day, I was totally upset. I didn't know what to do. It was oil on top, and I could not clean it up. I even tried to paint over it a little bit, and the footprints came back. So then I remembered that the rats were brought by the Spaniards to the Americas. There were some brown rats in the country, wild rats, but there were no black rats like the ones that spread the bubonic pests in Europe. Those were brought by the Spaniards and the galleons, the early ships. Just the common black rat that we see everywhere on the streets today, or the dark gray rat. I decided to make a cartoon with a ball pen of some kind of rat, similar to rat fink, and I decided to make my own version of a Mickey Mouse rat. Not necessarily Rat Fink, but more like Mickey Rat. So I drew a cartoon of that character underneath. He's just totally smiling with his tusks and all that. Then on another corner, I drew the logo of Pepsi Cola, but I changed the words Pepsi for pesty or pest in English. Then on the other facing page, there's text. There's an image from a codex painted right after the conquest of the Aztecs, crying in the middle of the siege of the city when the Spaniards surrounded the city for several weeks. The Indians didn't have anything to eat. Some of them actually died from not eating anything, so they were crying. Then on top of it, I had the hands of Christ, and that responds to a popular joke in Mexico. It's why Christ never used shampoo. The answer is because it kept dripping through the holes of his hands. So I have the hands of Christ on top of the crying Aztecs, and he's pouring shampoo through his hands, but the shampoo is dripping into them. I use this brand of shampoo, it's for babies, baby shampoo, that has a little drop that reads, no more tears. So, no more tears is going through the hands of Christ into the crying Aztecs on the bottom. A collector in Boulder actually bought this piece. His wife was totally upset with me for messing with Christ. I told her, I did the opposite of what the Spaniards did in Mexico. They put churches on top of the pyramids. Now if you want to know about the pre-Columbian religion, you have to do some archaeology dig, and then you will find the pre-Columbian religion underneath the church. I just put the pre-Columbian god on top of the European god. It's reverse anthropology, I told her. She liked the idea, and then she was happy with it. Thanks.